There's always been one thing that's been bothering me with Blender. No matter how long I searched, I could never find it. People have made abandoned buildings, subway trains, the back rooms, the entire earth, moths, TVs, donuts, cups, cars, but no one has made a Blender. No one has made a video on making a Blender within Blender. I knew this couldn't go on any further, so I set myself to teach everyone how to make a Blender within Blender. Now we have to go against the convention and don't delete the default cube, as in this case, it's the perfect base for our Blender. Blenders in general are not very rigid and tend to have a nice smooth and sleek look. In order to get the same look, go over to the modifiers tab, click add modifier, generate, then add a subdivision surface and set it to three levels. This makes the mesh appear much smoother. To shape it into a blender, subdivide the cube by holding down Ctrl and R and then using your mouse wheel to create two cuts and then left click. Then for the legs, you want to select all of the corners, then hit I in order to inset each of the faces. Then extrude them downwards by pressing E to create the legs of the blender. In order for us to get a sharper edge, we need to add more geometry. So add loop cuts to where we want the mesh to have more rigidity. Same as before, Ctrl and R. It's looking a little tall, so therefore, we select the top parts by holding down Shift while selecting, and then move them downwards, pressing G to move, and then Z to go in the Z axis. Next up, we have to create a plastic platform for the spinning blade. Go to object mode and add a cylinder by pressing Shift and A, and then a cylinder. Then scale it down by pressing S. We need to align the geometry to the origin point by pressing this C up here, so we can see the world from the top down. And we then move the cylinder by pressing G and place it right into the middle. To get the cylinder sloped, Press 3 to go into face select and select the top face and press S to scale it inwards. We then extrude it upwards by pressing E. We also want to add a bevel by pressing Ctrl and B, but we can see that the bevel doesn't exactly look right. That's because we haven't applied the scale to the mesh. In order to do that, go to Object, Apply, and then click All Transformations. Now this also moves the pivot point of the mesh to the origin, which is not what we want. In order to fix it, we right click the mesh and under set origin, click origin to geometry. Now when we bevel, it looks much better. Also, the reason that the mesh looks so pixelated is because we haven't made the surface smooth. Therefore, we right click and select auto smooth, which will make the geometry appear much nicer. Now we have to focus on the big container itself. We take another cylinder and begin extruding the top of it. Once we get to the top, we add slightly more of an opening. Then we delete the top face, as we aren't going to need it. Press X and select Face. We then give it a glass-like material by going into the Materials tab and increasing the transmission all the way to 1, and then decreasing the roughness. Now it looks pretty bad right now, but that's because there are no lights in the scene. So to help with it, I used this HDRI from Polyhaven to cast some light. To add it, go into the Shading tab and click the drop down menu and click World. Then select the background node and press Ctrl plus T. If it doesn't work for you, make sure that you have the No Wrangler add-on that comes built into Blender. Go to Edit, Preferences add-ons and search node wrangler then make sure that the box is checked we then click open and select our hdri from the folder we saved it in and already it looks much better but we still have to add a lot more in order to make this look good we need to add some more geometry to the glass so therefore press ctrl plus r and then use your scroll wheel to add more geometry to the glass we need to make the handle of the container so therefore, we select a face from the side of the blender and press E to extrude. Now we need to spin the material around so that we make the handle go into the top of the container. In order to do this, we need to use the spin tool. 
After extruding the bottom part of the handle, look at the grid in the background and put your cursor in line with that of the extruded bit at the bottom. Then select the spin tool from the sidebar and in the top left set it to the X axis. And then drag the spin tool so that it goes all the way to the top. We need to be more precise, so therefore go to the bottom left and change the angle to minus 180 degrees exactly. Increase the steps if you need to. We need the handle to go into the blender, so therefore we press 1 to select the vertex points. Then select both of the points and press M, then select Merge at Center. Do this for all of the other bits. It's jutting out a little bit, so therefore we press 2 to select Edge Mode, and then select the border and then press G to move it into the blender. Now it's looking a little cube-like, so therefore we add a subdivision surface set to two levels. I also want to move the handle a little bit more, so press O to enable proportional editing, and then move the middle part of the handle a bit left. Then to add a bump, we disabled it again, and then scale the middle so it gets a nice bump. Now right now the glass is razor thin, which is not how it works in real life. So therefore, add a solidify modifier to the glass. Now we can do whatever we want to the blender and it'll look pretty decent. I decided to select some parts of the blender to extrude inwards and get some indentation. I needed to extrude them out in their own respective way, so therefore we go into the scaling menu and select extrude along normal. This scales all of the points in the direction of their normal. We also want to give the blender a little lip so that liquids can pour out of the container. In order to do that, you press 2 to go into edge select, select two edges and then move it outwards by pressing G and then Y for the Y axis. You can also adjust it further by going into Vertex Select and moving them closer together by scaling them across the X-axis. I also wanted to make some parts look more round, so therefore I selected the entire circle by pressing Shift and Alt together and clicking the bit I wanted to extrude out. Starting to look much better now, but it seems we've kind of neglected the bottom bit, so therefore it's time to give it some textures. We first start with the feet. First, we select all of the bits that are feet, and then go into the material editor, click the plus icon, and then new, and then assign. This assigns the selected part of the mesh to this material. We want to make it a glossy plastic, so therefore, we make the texture a dark color and decrease the roughness, which makes them nice and shiny. They were also looking a bit too rounded near the bottom, so we press Ctrl plus R to add loop cuts into the bottom of the legs. For the other parts of the blender, I wanted to have a nice metal texture, so therefore we increase the metallic to 1 and then decrease the roughness slightly. This part is not required, but for those who have a keen eye and want some extra realism, you can add a border between the plastic and the metal. You can apply the subdivision modifier to the model and then pressing Shift Alt and then left click around the plastic. Do this for each of the legs and then use the same extrude along normal scaling that I mentioned before. It's looking a little sharp around the edge, so therefore we add a bevel modifier to make it appear smooth. Remember to apply all transformations if the bevel doesn't seem to work. Now it's just about adding some more stuff to the blender. We'll start by making a lid to the top of it, by adding a cylinder, centering to the middle and then extruding the top upwards. We then take the side of the cylinder, pressing Alt plus Shift and then clicking, and then we scale it across the normal. Then select the top parts of the mesh and extrude it upwards, stopping, and then extruding again. Then scale it inwards by pressing S. Do the same thing again by extruding it inwards, pausing, and then extruding again. Sometimes the Shift Alt button doesn't really work, so therefore you can press Ctrl while clicking around the bits of the circle and finally extruding them downwards. We'll give that the same texture as the bottom plastic, so therefore go to the shading tab of the plastic, selecting all of the notes and then pressing right click and then copy. 
We then go back to the lid, selecting all, and then pressing X to delete. Then press Ctrl V to paste in the material. It also needs a bevel, so go to the tab over here and add a bevel modifier. Make sure to apply all transformations and set the origin to the geometry. And of course, a blender can't work without the knob to turn it on and off. So we add a cylinder, to which we select the front face and scale it inwards. Apply all transformations and then bevel the edges by pressing Ctrl and B. For the knob, it's a simple cube that we can add a subdivision surface to and nudge it into shape. You can do this part however you like, as there isn't really any wrong answer to this knob. If you want to add some extra detail, you can add some text to the top. I decided to add some Roman numerals to the dial. And now you're pretty much finished. But of course, it's just a 3D model, it's not an actual picture. So therefore, we set up a camera, adjust it so the blender is in the middle of the frame. Thereafter, we add a flat plane to the bottom and extrude the edge upwards. After that, you can bevel the edge and set it to smooth. For some extra fanciness, I added an area light to both sides of the blender, along with a top light for some extra depth. Then finally, press F12 to hit Render. Remember to save your image in Image, and then click Save As, and then put it to where you want to. And there you have it, your very own Blender within Blender. That's it for this tutorial. Hope you... Wait, what? What? Polygon had a 3D model of a Blender this entire time? Oh well, that costs money. I'm gonna be making my model CC0 so that anyone can use my model, even for commercial purposes. Check the link in the description to download the model and press the subscribe button while you're at it.